Hey everybody, in this video I'd like to go over how you can exploit the no root squash option in NFS for privilege escalation. So on the left we've got our CentOS 8 server, now that's what's running our NFS server, and on the right we've got an Ubuntu 18.04 client. Now let's imagine this Ubuntu client is our machine, and the NFS server is something that we were trying to attack. So the NFS server, uh, if we had a low privilege shell on it, and there was the no root squash option set in NFS, there's a possibility that we are able to exploit privilege to get root access on the server. Now let's take a look at how root squash works in NFS. So right now, uh, root squash is enabled on the NFS server, and we have the server share mounted to this mount slash NFS. So right now, uh, we can take a look and see the files that are in here. Uh, and we are logged in as root in our client. So any files that we create should be owned by root. So if we just go ahead and touch a file called A, and do an ls-l. We notice that the file was created with nobody and no group as the owner. Now this is because the root squash option is set on the NFS server. Now what the root squash option does is any files that are uploaded by the root user on a client, the owner is changed from root to nobody. Now it might be unclear of why that's done, but we're going to go over how this can be exploited in order to, in order to escalate privileges. So if we take a look over in our NFS server, uh, right now we're just gonna go ahead and edit the uh, Etsy exports file. So right now by default, the root squash option is enabled. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn on no root squash. So if root squash is the option that allows files uploaded by the root user to be changed to the nobody user for the owner. No root squash is just going to disable that feature. So now we'll save those changes and we'll go ahead and restart the NFS server. Perfect. All right, now we'll go ahead we'll back over to our client and we'll go ahead, just take a look at the files that are in here. Uh, now let's go ahead and just try to create a file called C. Now note that we are logged in as the root user. So now that no root squash has been turned on, we see that the file C that we created is actually owned by the root user instead of the nobody user. So now we're able to upload files as root. If we take a look over at the actual server, let's go ahead and cd into our slash export directory. That is where uh, the NFS export actually is. So if we do our ls-l here, we can see that this C file is actually owned by root even on the server. Now that's a very important thing to understand because now what we can do is upload some sort of shell. Uh, right now I've got a shell written in C that I put on there. So we just cat that file. You can take a look at what's inside. I'll also put this shell down in the description if you'd like to play with it yourself. So what this does is just set the user ID to zero and execute uh, bin bash. And right now we can go ahead and compile that shell with GCC. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, we'll just output that to something just called SUID. All right, perfect. Now we can see that SUID file is there. It is executable and it's owned by root. Now we can execute that file and we can go ahead and try that over on our server. So if we go over to the server, uh, we can see that that SUID file is there and it's owned by root and we do have execute privilege on it so we can go ahead and execute it but notice it just gives us a bash environment as the conda user still so we'll go ahead and exit out of that now the key here is setting the SUID bit on this shell so we can do this with change mod u plus s and then the name of the file in case you don't know what the set UID does is that whenever this uh, shell is executed it's going to execute it as the owner of the file so in this case instead of executing it as the actual user that is executing it in the case of the server it was the conda user it's actually going to be executed as the root user now this should spawn us a bash environment as root on the server so if we go over to the server and we take a look at what's in here we can see that this uh, suid file is now red to indicate that the that there is SUID privilege on there. 
Now, if we go ahead and execute that, you can see that we are root on the server. So that is why setting the no root squash option on NFS can be dangerous and lead to privilege escalation on the machine.